Hello. This video is going to show how to use the Buckley Leverett solution combined with real data from a reservoir or simulation data to quantify two important characteristics of recovery, which are the local displacement efficiency and the sweep efficiency. And I'm going to define these two terms as well. And I'm going to do it in the normal way through. And the whiteboard here. Okay. So one equation that you often see written in reservoir engineering is to write the recovery factor here, which is the amount of oil that I produced divided by the oil that was originally in place, as a product of two terms. And I'm also going to write down one of the assumptions Okay, it's false. So the recovery factor is written as a product of what's called the sweep efficiency. And ED, which is called the local displacement. efficiency. And we're assuming that this is during a pressure maintenance scheme. So I'm injecting, in this case, by default, water to displace oil, and I'm keeping the pressure the same. And if I keep the pressure the same, then we know that the oil volume formation factor, BO, is going to stay approximately constant. And what this means is that there is not a significant contribution to recovery because of the expansion of the fluids. Okay, so it's almost the opposite the primary production where the recovery is driven by the fact that the fluids are expanding. Here we're looking at where there is purely a displacement process. Okay, so we're gonna, this is simply a definition, right? There isn't, I haven't introduced anything new, but now I want to describe what these two terms mean. What the local displacement efficiency um, represents is that if I have a small piece of rock, instance like this and I inject water and I produce oil what fraction of the oil that's in place have I recovered okay so it's, it's simply telling us how much oil have I recovered in a region of rock where the water has gone okay now we think about this this is basically an idealized one dimensional displacement where the water has gone. And that's what, you do in, that's what you do in an experiment to measure relative permeability. And that's what you analyze in Buckley Leverett is you're looking at a region of rock where the water has basically pushed through in one direction, how much has it recovered? So in fact, that's fairly easy um, to look at. We start with some initial oil saturation SOI, and that SOI is one minus SWI, the initial water saturation. And then sometime later after the displacement, let's imagine right, that we're at some average water saturation SW bar, or which is a or, or alternatively that we're at some average oil saturation SO. So the local displacement efficiency is going to be the change in saturation. Okay, okay, we've gone from SW bar to SWI, okay, divided by um, what you had to begin with. So this is the change in saturation. This is the amount of oil. This is the pore volumes of oil recovered, right? This is MPD. And then the local displacement efficiency is simply defined as your MPD, because that's the pore volumes you recovered, divided by what you had originally, which was right. So that's, that's a definition of local displacement efficiency. And you notice here, because I haven't defined this in terms of taking things to the surface and converting back down to the reservoir like I do in prime production, because we're making this key assumption 
that there's no um, pressure change in the vessel. Okay, so what's the sweep efficiency? Well, this diagram is at a length scale of a few centimeters. How much do I get out of a piece of rock where the water goes? What the sweep efficiency represents is that we might have a reservoir, say we've got a injecting a well here, we've got a producer here, and we may have lots of injector wells, okay? And lots of producers, very complex arrangement. And here the length scales are a few kilometers, right? Much larger scale. And, you know, we can draw in, in uh, different colors. For instance, I'm gonna show in, in, in red, areas which are high permeability regions of the reservoir. So imagine we're sort of looking at the reservoir sort of from the side, right, because it's really in three dimensions. And so now when we inject water, right, we inject water, the water is going to go along these high permeability regions. Okay, so we inject water here and here, um, inject here, there's a tendency for water to be um, moving through the high permeability regions. So we have some complex three-dimensional distribution of water. Basically, what the sweep efficiency represents, okay, the sweep efficiency represents is the fraction right, of the reservoir volume contacted by water. Okay, so this is what ES is, okay? So what that means is you have some complex three-dimensional arrangement of fluid flow in space, and that's driven by the well placement, the overall geological structure of the reservoir, and the permeability. And it's, it's very complex, okay? Um, and so what this would be, right, is that this would represent the sweep efficiency, basically would represent this volume, right, the total volume of, sorry, the total volume of the reservoir contacted by water, okay, divided by the gross rock volume of the reservoir. And maybe we would multiply apply this by phi and net to gross, but it depends how we define this. If this is genuinely the water volume in the pore space, then this would be divided by the net to gross, but this is simply the amount here, wherever the water, the water saturation isn't necessarily one here, it's simply the fraction of the reservoir volume that's contacted by water. Where it has contact, been contacted by water, okay, we can do it in this, right? where it has been contacted by water locally, okay, we have some average saturation SW bar that is not necessarily one, it is however much oil we've recovered. Okay, so I've, I've sort of, this isn't a sort of rigorous looking equation, but the concept is clear. Okay, now often when people uh, look at this, they define this local displacement efficiency as they say, well, SW bar, what's the average water saturation? Well, there's a residual saturation. So we get down to the residual saturation. Okay? So often what people do is they write here one minus SR, and then they define the sweep efficiency such that you get the recovery factor you've either measured at the wellhead or comes out of a reservoir simulation. However, that's not quite right. Because we know in Buckley Leverett, um, particularly in many cases, that you only reach um, the residual oil saturation asymptotically after you've injected an infinite amount of water. But actually, in real reservoir engineering situations, you don't do that because it's economically not viable. You would typically, typically, what you do is you inject TD, which is around one, right? You would typically inject enough water to fill your reservoir. And that sort of makes intuitive sense. If you inject only enough reservoir to fill a tenth of the pore volume, and then clearly you haven't injected enough water to push everything out, okay? But you're not gonna inject 10 pore volumes of water because then you're, you know, right, you're gonna to have to be recycling, recycling, recycling water, and that comes at a cost, okay? So most water flood schemes that are implemented have a TD that's in the range of about a half. Occasionally it may go as high as two or three, but it's of order one. And at that point, you don't necessarily have driven, even where the water has gone, even in Buckley Leverett, even in this idealized situation, you haven't driven 
um, the saturation all the way down. So then how do you quantify the local displacement efficiency? How do you quantify sweep efficiency? So what I'm going to show now, and I'm going to, actually, I think um, it's maybe easier if I just clear everything now. Okay. So I'm going to keep with my Okay, I'm going to keep with this, but now I'm going to show a plot, right, which we've shown before. This is MPD, and this is TD. Okay, and I'm going to put a proper axis on this. So this is the maximum you can get to one minus S W R minus S R. So this is your asymptote. Okay, and I'm going to put, say, for the sake of argument, this is one. Right? Because one mistake that students often do, particularly where there's an asymptote, they show TD going up to 10,000 or something, whatever Excel gives you. And that's not necessarily physically um, reasonable. Okay? So we're normally just looking at TD um, going to about one. Okay? So now imagine that we do our buckley leverett analysis. We know that the buckley leverett analysis, and maybe what I'll do is I'll show that in red. So we do our buckley leverett analysis. We have a region where MPD equals TD, okay? Then we hit the shock. There's actually a change in gradient, okay? And imagine this is it. And asymptotically, if you go, you know, inject loads and loads and loads of pore volumes, you may indeed drive the, the, the rock down to residual oil saturation, but it's, it's often one big mistake people make to assume I've got a residual oil saturation, that's what I'm gonna read. No, it may require you to to inject a huge amount of oil. And, and, and the physical reason for that, particularly in mixed wet and oil wet rocks, is that the oil likes the solid surface, it's clinging to the solid surface, right? And you're pushing water and you're expecting the, the, the oil to flow out really slowly in layers. Right? It's the analogy, you've got oily hands and you're not using soap, you're just expecting, oh, as the water runs past my hand, some of the oil basically will flow off. Yeah, well, and you're gonna stay under the tap for, half an hour and you still haven't got all the oil out. So it's exactly the same here. It's not that the oil is physically trapped, it can flow, it just flows really slowly. Okay, so that's um, your Buckley Leverett. So let's, let's, let's um, write this down. That's your Buckley Leverett. Okay, and this is something you can do analytically. So you measure your relative permeabilities, you know the initial water saturation in the reservoir, that's your initial water saturation using Buckley Leverett. You know your residual oil saturation, and if you have a complex field, it will be the volume weighted average residual saturation. You have a representative relative permeability, and you plot out your um, recovery results. Okay. Now let's imagine that um, you do one of two things. Either you have real data from the field, so you're producing from the field and you measure how much you produce. Now, in order to find MPD and TD, okay, you do need, this is the amount of oil produced, okay, um, divided by the pore volume, you need an estimate of pore volume. So if it's real field data, you also need some model, some geological model that's estimated the pore volume. But you do know how much you produced, so you can find MPD. Sometimes people get a bit paralyzed with this. You've got MP and then how many pore volumes is it? And it seems very abstract and it's so abstract, it just, it just your, your brain um, completely freezes, but it's not impossible. Similarly with TD, you know how much water you injected. You are the engineer, you have designed the wells, okay? And so all you need to know, if you've got NP is your um, amount of oil produced, okay? This is a reservoir volume, so it's MPBO, okay? That's your reservoir volume that you've produced. And then you divide it by your pore volume, which is your net to gross, your cross, sorry, your porosity, your gross volume. So this is MPD, okay? And then with TD, if I'm injecting water, right, at a given uh, surface rate, so that's BW, this can be a function of time, okay? So this, um, this can be a function of time, so an integrated over time. And again, V5 et to gross, and that's TD. 
So these are things that, that are not sort of mystery concepts, okay? They're things you can get from real data, but you do have to have an estimate of your poor one. The other way of doing it is imagine you're doing this at the very early stages of reservoir production, so you haven't actually produced much from the field. Instead, what you have is you have a sophisticated reservoir simulation model. And that is, you have a representation, sort of Lego brick type representation of what you think the reservoir structure is and the permeabilities. You solve the multi-phase Darcy law, you solve a pressure equation, and you simulate the flow with known, that is, you're the engineer, you've designed it, known boundary conditions of the wells. Okay? So you predict what's likely to happen. Okay, so what you do is now you have your, your real data, your predictions, and I'm going to draw them this, okay? And I'm going to call this, this is your real data, okay? So it can be, can be reality, okay? Or it can be a prediction. Now, this will be lower, right? And it's lower because Buckley Leverett is idealized, right? It's a one dimensional displacement. It essentially says the water has gone through uh, my rock. In reality, of course, you've got complex well placement, complex heterogeneity. The water isn't going to contact all of the reservoirs. So the recovery is going to be lower. Again, some people say, no, 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 this is wrong because in Buckley Leverett, there's just one well. And in reality, there are lots of wells. So I've got to somehow find an effective effective area and volume for each well and, and do something a bit more complex. No, you just plot this out. Right? This is defined um, for any number of wells in any situation for an entire field. So actually, it's much more conceptual than that. Don't, don't overthink it. Don't, don't think, yeah, I've got an injection well and there's got to be some region that goes to a specific production well and then I've got to convert it back. No, no, you just have your data from your field with lots of wells okay? and you plot it like this. Okay? Nothing else. Now, there's one strange feature that you see here is that actually, to begin with, you can have more recovery in reality um, than you can buckle lever it. And the reason for that is that to begin with, you may have a period either of primary production or a period where you're actually injecting less than you produce. And that's quite common, right? You want to get your money, right? You've got your production wells, your boss says boost production, you want your bonus. So you're, you're producing the oil while someone's scrabbling around trying to get the water injection facilities to work. So it's quite common that to begin with, you're injecting less water than the oil you produce. Um, and so the reservoir pressure is declining. As long as you don't go below the bubble point, you haven't done anything catastrophic. Um, and so what happens is you're, you're inj actually injecting very little water, but you're, this is reservoir expansion. Okay, this is the expansion of the pores. But eventually in a, in a normal water flood scheme. Okay, so imagine at the end of the field life, or you know the end of your your period you're sort of here right so it doesn't have to be at exactly one pool volume it's wherever you think okay so what you can do here is what you can show here is this is your mpd from buckley leverett this is your mpd from reality your sweep efficiency can be defined as quite simply your sweep efficiency is your MPD in reality, right, which I call R, divided by your MPD from Buckley level. That's your sweep efficiency. Okay. And then your, so that's your sweep efficiency, your local displacement efficiency, we've already defined it, ES is actually. Right, your MPD Buckley Leverett divided by one minus SWI. So your overall recovery, right? If you see this MP over N, if we multiply these together, is just your real recovery divided by one minus SWI. And I've ignored any expansion, right? So there should be a ratio of, of expansion as well. And I've ignored that because I've assumed that the the basically the recovery due to fluid expansion is small. Right, so this only works, as I said, for pressure maintenance scale. So now you can define, uh, sorry, this is, this is, this is uh, misleading. This is the local displacement efficiency. Sorry, this is the local displacement efficiency, ED. This is, this is the sweep efficiency. This is what we do. Okay, so we can define um, these, two, the, these two things. And you might say, well, what's the point? Because you know, this gives me an equation that's sort of trivial. 
um, my recovery factor right is just related to um to my re real recovery factor divided by one minus swi so you know there, there, there's nothing really there's nothing really there okay but the reason why it's useful is as follows is I do this analysis, right? The Buckley Leverett analysis is something you would do really quickly. The real data is something you really should have, you know, and want to look at, right? Or your simulation data. But what it does, particularly if it's uh, real data or simulation data, imagine that your real data is really very low compared to Buckley Leverett. What that implies is your sweep efficiency is low. And so that immediately guides you to saying, hmm, maybe you should drill some more wells. Is it because you're highly heterogeneous, compartmentalized reservoir, or is it maybe some infill drilling might work? If on the other hand, your real data is quite close to Buckley level, your sweep efficiency is say 80%, then you're doing well. There's no reason for infill drilling. Your overall recovery might be low, but that's because of an intrinsic problem, I would say with the relative permeabilities, even where the water goes, you're not recovering much oil, in which case, the way of improving recovery is you've got to do something different. You've got to inject low salinity water. You've got to inject a surfactant. You've got to inject gas. So the reason why you do this is it's very quick. If you've got ES is low, then the conclusion, if you want to increase, right, as an engineer, you need to do something. You don't just look at the plot and leave it there, um, right? If ES is low, then infill drilling is the obvious possibility. If ES is actually high, even if the recovery factor is poor, then you want to try some EOR, right, IOR process, right? Right, so that if ES is low, the problem is the sweep efficiency is low. What you're injecting just isn't contacting most of the reservoir. And so you need to deal with that problem, okay? Fiddling around with what you inject is not going to improve that problem enormously. On the other hand, if the sweep efficiency is good, even if the overall recovery looks lousy, right, both of these, both of these curves are low, well, then what it's telling you is, yeah, you're contacting all the reservoir, but you're just not getting the oil out where it goes. So you need to inject something else. You need to do something else. Okay? Now, in theory, you can do this anyway. If you have a simulation model, you can sort of play with different parameters. But often these three-dimensional simulation models are so complex, it's really very difficult to sort of tease out what the essence is. And the beauty of this analysis, you know, it's, it is really, once you get your brain around plotting real data in this sense, um, this really is a, a, you know, an afternoon's work, if that, and it gives you insight into what's happening into the field. And that's one thing that often reservoir engineers lack. You know, they run sophisticated models, they've looked at lots of data, but they're unable to process this in a simple way. Whereas this type of analysis will tell you immediately what needs to be done. Now, I can't define what you mean by high and low um, sweep efficiency. I mean, a high sweep efficiency is somewhere um, greater than two thirds low sweep efficiency if you're contacting less than the reservoir, less than half the reservoir, just as a guideline. But it does depend. Sometimes you have a very heterogeneous compartmentalized reservoir and there's not a lot you can do. Other times, um, you know, you have a much more uniform reservoir and you'd expect to get a, a higher sweep. Efficiency. Okay, so I will stop there. Okay, that really, to a certain extent, concludes what I want to say about the Buckley Leverett solution, it gives you actually a way of using that solution in a slightly unusual context. Normally, what people do is they just plot it up and sort of look what's going on and so we use this to assess relative permeabilities. But there's actually something that's useful in the context of more detailed modeling or in the context of actually having data. Okay, so thank you very much.